Hello, my name is Jay Winters from University Lutheran. Today is Good Friday, one of the most moving, soulful, and impactful moments in the entire Christian year. An uh, evening on which we remember the suffering and death of Jesus Christ. Normally, on Good Friday, we gather together in this sanctuary and we go through an experience that is called the service of shadows, or tenebrae. And as we go through that, we do things like strip the altar and read the passion of our Lord. Yet, this year is not like most years. This year, we cannot gather together in this sanctuary and do the things that we normally do. So instead of trying to recreate a tenebrae service for you, instead what we're going to do this year is we are going to engage together in 14 different scriptural stations of the cross. What the stations of the cross are, 14 different moments from the end of Jesus' life that stretch from his praying in the Garden of Gethsemane to his final being, finally being buried in Joseph of Arimathea's tomb after he has died. At each one of those 14 moments, we will stop and reflect and pray together. And then at five other moments in this service, we will stop additionally and we will reflect together through a small homily about the meaning of these events and what they can teach us and how peering into this part of Jesus' life can bring to us more clarity on what Jesus has done in dying on the cross for us. Because when he died on that cross, he died on that cross, taking it up joyfully for you, so that you may know that his suffering and death paid the price for your sins, and so that you may know that on the final Easter, the resurrection day, when he returns again, that we too will join him in a resurrection like his. We hope that this is a meaningful time for you, and a time when you are able to sit aside and reflect on what Christ has done for you. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We begin with a prayer. Almighty God and Father, in loving kindness you sent your Son that our sins might be forgiven and that we may join you in eternal blessedness and joy. Bless us 
as we gather together through these means in order to reflect on what your Son has done for us so that one day we may be with you. We pray this all in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. The first station, Jesus prays in the Garden of Gethsemane. From Matthew 26, verses 36 through 41. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. And taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch with me. And going a little farther, he fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. And he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So you could not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Now that we have reflected together on our Lord in the Garden of Gethsemane, let us pray. Lord God, grant us your strength and wisdom that we may have you in mind in all things and at all times. Amen. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. The second station, Jesus is betrayed by Judas and is arrested. From Mark 14, verses 43 through 46. And immediately, while Jesus was still speaking, Judas came, one of the twelve, and with him a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I kiss is the man. Seize him and lead him away under guard. And when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and he kissed him. And they laid hands on him and seized him. Now that we have reflected upon Jesus being betrayed, we ask God in prayer. Lord God, grant that the strength of our convictions may always lead us to reflect on the good news that you bring. Amen.
as strange as it may seem to even think it, I think it's important for us to remember that Jesus didn't die for us by accident. It wasn't like Jesus was tricked by Judas. It wasn't like Jesus went into this not knowing what he was doing when he was praying to the Father. It wasn't like Jesus didn't know what he was doing when he stood silent in front of the Jewish council that was condemning him. Instead, Jesus knew exactly what he was doing as he began his journey to the cross. He prayed to his Father that if it was at all possible for this to be done in some other way, that that would be the case. But he knew that there was no other way. It was simply the human part of him crying out, crying in pain, knowing what he was going into. Knowing that he was going to be betrayed by one of his own disciples, one of the men that he had been around for the past three years. This man was going to betray him with a kiss. And he knew it. And he still stepped into that reality. And as they dragged him away and brought him to Caiaphas, and as they brought together this kangaroo court, he purposefully kept his silence, only speaking the things that would inevitably lead him to his death upon the cross. Jesus knew what he was doing, and he did it out of love for me, for you, for us. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. The third station. Jesus is condemned by the Sanhedrin from Luke chapter 22, verses 66 through 71. When day came, the assembly of the elders of the people gathered together, both chief priests and scribes, and they led him away to their council, and they said, If you are the Christ, tell us. But he said to them, If I tell you, you will not believe. And if I ask you, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man shall be seated at the right hand of the power of God. So they all said, Are you the Son of God then? And he said to them, You say that I am. Then they said, What further testimony do we need? We have heard it ourselves from his own lips. Now that we have heard Jesus being condemned by the Sanhedrin, we pray together. Lord God, grant us your sense of righteousness that we may never cease to work to bring about the justice that your kingdom promise. Amen. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. The fourth station, 
Jesus is denied by Peter. Matthew 26, verses 69 through 75. Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard, and a servant girl came up to him and said, You also were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before them all, saying, I do not know what you mean. And when he went out to the entrance, another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. And again he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly, you too are one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then he began to invoke a curse on himself and to swear, I do not know the man. And immediately the rooster crowed. And Peter remembered the saying of Jesus, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Now that we have reflected upon Peter's betrayal, we bring to God our prayer. Lord God, grant us the gift of honesty that we may not fear to speak the truth, even when it is difficult. Amen. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. The fifth station, Jesus is judged by Pilate. Mark 15, 1 through 15. And as soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the scribes and the elders and with the whole council. And they bound Jesus and led him away and delivered him over to Pilate. And Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And he answered him, You have said so. And the chief priests accused him of many things. And Pilate again asked him, have you no answer to make? See how many charges they bring against you? But Jesus made no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the feast he used to release for them one prisoner whom they asked. And among the rebels in prison who had committed murder in the insurrection, there was a man called Barabbas. And the crowd came up and began to ask Pilate to do as he usually did for them. And he answered them, saying, do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he perceived that it was out of envy that the chief priest had delivered him up. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have him release for them instead Barabbas. And Pilate again said to them, And what shall I do with the man that you call king of the Jews? And they cried out again, Crucify him. And Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released for them Barabbas, and having scourged Jesus, he delivered him up to be crucified. Now that we have reflected upon Jesus being judged by Pilate, we pray together. Lord God, grant us discernment that we may see as you see, not as the world sees. Amen. Have you ever been betrayed? If you have, you kind of get an understanding for where Jesus is at. 
But maybe even a deeper question than have you ever been betrayed is the question, have you ever been the one who has betrayed someone? It's not something that we like to think about or talk about, yet the reality is that many of us have had those cowardly moments. Many of us have had those moments when we have betrayed someone, where we have refused to stand up for what is right, when we have turned our backs when our friends needed us the most. And the reality is that every time that we commit a sin, every time that we do something that is not full of the love of God and is not full of the love of our neighbor, that we are betraying Christ. We are acting cowardly. We are acting in a way that shows that we are not to be trusted that we are betrayers, that we are cowardly, that we leave people alone by themselves, and that our righteousness is not full. But thankfully, Jesus' righteousness is. Jesus does not betray us. Instead, he continues his march toward the cross, recognizing that there are many points in his story where he could have betrayed us, where he could have done something, where he turned his back on us, where he was cowardly, where he wasn't righteous, but he refused those things so that he could go to the cross and love us. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. The sixth station, Jesus is scourged and crowned with thorns. From John 19, verses 1 through 3. Then Pilate took Jesus and flogged him. And the soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head and arrayed him in a purple robe. And they came up to him saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and struck him with their hands. Now that we have reflected on Jesus being scourged and receiving the crown of thorns. We pray together. Lord, grant us patience in times of suffering that we may offer our lives as a sacrifice of praise. Amen. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. The seventh station, Jesus bears the cross. John 19, verse 6, and verses 12 through 17. When the chief priests and the officers saw him, they cried out, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I find no guilt in him. From then on, Pilate sought to release him, 
But the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are not Caesar's friend. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. So when Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judgment seat at the place called the Stone Pavement and in Aramaic, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation for the Passover. It was about the sixth hour. He said to the Jews, Behold, your king. They cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. So he delivered him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and he went out bearing his own cross to the place called the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. Now that we have reflected upon Jesus bearing the cross, we pray to God. Lord God, grant us strength of purpose that we may faithfully bear our crosses each and every day. Amen. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. The Eighth Station Jesus is helped by Simon the Cyrenian to carry the cross. From Mark 15, verse 21. And they compelled a passerby, Simon of Cyrene, who is coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. Now that we have reflected upon Simon the Cyrene carrying Jesus' cross, we pray. Lord God, grant us willing spirits that we may be your instruments on earth. Amen. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. The ninth station, Jesus meets the women of Jerusalem. From Luke 23, verses 27 through 31. And there followed him a great multitude of the people and of women who were mourning and lamenting for him. But turning to them, Jesus said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, Cover us. For if they do these things when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Now that we have reflected upon Jesus meeting the women of Jerusalem, let us pray. 
Lord God, grant us gentle spirits that we may comfort those who mourn. Amen. What is it like to suffer? Jesus suffers on our behalf even before he's ever even crucified. He's scourged. He's made to carry his own cross to the point where he is so exhausted that they have to bring somebody else in in order to carry the cross the rest of the way. He suffers not only physically but also emotionally recognizing the sorrow that is happening all around him, the sorrow within his own heart and the sorrow within the hearts of others. We've all suffered. We've suffered physically, we've suffered emotionally, we've suffered spiritually. And our suffering is a picture into what Jesus suffered What Jesus went through as he continued his way to the cross so that he could show us exactly how much he was willing to pay in terms of his own personal anguish in order to love us. His suffering is our proof that we are loved by him. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. The tenth station, Jesus is crucified. Luke 23, verses 33 to 34. And when they came to the place that is called the skull, there they crucified him and the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they cast lots to to divide his garments. Now that we have reflected upon Jesus being crucified, We pray together. Lord God, grant us merciful hearts that we may bring your reconciliation and forgiveness to all. Amen. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. The eleventh station. Jesus promises his kingdom to the good thief. Luke 23, verses 39 through 43. One of the criminals who were hanged railed at him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we are receiving the due reward for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. 
And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he said to him, Truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Now that we have reflected upon Jesus' conversation with the thief on the cross, we pray. Lord, grant us perseverance that we may never stop seeking you. Amen. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. The twelfth station. Jesus speaks to his mother and the disciple. From John 19, verses 25 through 27. But standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. And he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And at that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. Now that we have reflected upon Jesus' conversation with his mother and his disciple, we pray together. Lord God, grant us constancy that we may be willing to stand with those who are in need. Amen. We see God in his clearest revelation to humanity as Jesus is crucified. When Jesus is lifted up on the cross in order to pay for our sins, in order to die there, we see God revealing himself so clearly, not only revealing the love that he has for us, that he's willing to take upon this physical suffering, that he's willing to take on even his own death, but also we see a clear revelation of God that God will not take the easy way out. Instead, God will always be righteous. God will always be perfect. God will always do what needs to be done and what needs to be done in this time is that his son has to be crucified with criminals. He has to be mocked and jeered at. He has to cry out using the words of the Psalms. He has to be righteous so that he can be loving, so that he can look upon us and say, forgive them, Father, for they know what, not what they do, so that he can look upon us and then he can say to us, today you will be with me in paradise. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. 
We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. The thirteenth station, Jesus dies on the cross. Luke 23, verses 44 through 49. It was now about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour, when the sun's light had failed, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus crawling out with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. Now when the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God, saying, Certainly, this man was innocent. And all the crowds that had assembled for this spectacle, when they saw what had taken place, returned home, beating their breasts. And all his acquaintances, and the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance, watching these things. Now that we have reflected upon Jesus' death upon the cross, we pray, Lord God, Grant us trust in you that when our time on earth is ended, our spirits may come to you without delay. Amen. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We adore you, O Christ. And we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. The fourteenth station. Jesus is placed in the tomb. Matthew 27, 57 through 60. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who also was a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. And Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen shroud, and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had cut in the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the entrance of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. Now that we have reflected upon Jesus being buried in the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea, we pray together. Lord God, grant us compassion that we may always provide for those who are in need. Amen. Jesus' death is something that we grapple with tonight. Jesus' death is where we leave the story off tonight in some ways. And it feels wrong, especially knowing what we know about Easter. We know that Easter is coming, and yet tonight the story ends with his death. We know that Easter is coming, and yet tonight the story ends with him being buried and two women looking across the way at his tomb and wondering what just happened. Tonight we grapple with the fact that even though we know that Jesus raised from the dead on Easter Sunday, his disciples didn't know that he was going to do that. 
The women who attended him didn't know that he was going to do that. Joseph of Arimathea didn't know that he was going to do that. And so tonight we take a little moment to ourselves. And we consider his story as it ends with his death, which would have been enough. It would have been enough to pay for our sins. But it wouldn't have been enough to give us the assurance that we need. The assurance comes on Easter Sunday. That because he raises, we will raise as well. But tonight, the story ends with a simple fact. This, the Son of God, loved us so much that he died. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Finally, as our time of reflection ends, we pray together. Lord God, grant that we who have reflected upon your suffering and death make take to heart the love which you have shown us in these things that you have done for us and may we take hope and comfort and peace knowing that by your stripes we are healed and that by your death we are granted new life. Amen.